been I've been I've been dishing it to her since twelve.
Good evening. Oh gosh, that was kind of loud. Good evening. I'm Ken Blythe, and I have the incredible honour of serving as pastor at St. Armand's Key Lutheran Church. Now, someone said it was a terrible mistake to give the pastor a microphone and let him stand in front of people. How, how do you like your eggs at breakfast? <laughs> Over easy, well done. I'm going to be very brief because I want to introduce to you Michael Bodnick, our Minister of Music, who's going to welcome you also, introduce himself, and tell you a little about our music programme before he introduces the incredibly talented musicians we have for you tonight. But as pastor, I wanted to be the person that thanked you. Um, we've got to the end of the holiday season. Multiple holy days have come and gone, and you are all probably exhausted with parties and family gatherings and traveling. And I know this is the weekend where everything goes back to normal. So I want to thank you for schlepping out here tonight, making that effort to be here and to rejoice and celebrate with us and hear beautiful music with us. It required an effort on your part. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you did and for being here tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. And that was all I planned to say until I spoke to Michael and I said, who's going to mention the free will offering? And he said, well, it's probably, the guilt is probably good coming from the pastor. And I thought, he doesn't mean that. He just means the Scotsman should talk about money. <laughs> this concert is provided to you free of charge tonight, a love offering from St. Armand's Key Lutheran Church to you, our neighbours, near and far. But... See, with the Scotsman, there's always a but. But if you would like to give a free will offering as you leave, we will not be offended. <laughs> there is a green box on a table in the, the lobby. You can drop offerings in. Steve Gunderson is, is modeling a beautiful brass bowl, one at either side of the exit door. And just if you thought you could sneak out by the side door, we're going to have some young people there who... <laughs> We're going to pretend it's Disney. We're going to turn you upside down and shake you by the ankles until... No, a free will offering would be wonderful. Thank you in advance for that. But the main point of this evening is be our guest, enjoy, celebrate, and rejoice with us. Now, Michael, I can't see you through the stage lights. This is Michael Bodnick, our incredible Minister of Music. Look at this crowd, thank you so much for coming. This is awesome. Um, I'm Michael Bodnick, if you don't know me, I'm the Minister of Music here. I'm the very fortunate uh, Minister of Music to be in such a wonderful uh, church home. And uh, if you are a guest or a visitor, you are warmly welcomed here at SAKLC. Um, the group you are about to hear tonight, can I just, I, I can't see anything. Can you just raise your hand if you've heard the King's Brass before? Just, oh wow, that's cool. Um, if you haven't heard the King's Brass, they are incredible. Um, funny story, they've been here now, this is their third time here at St. Armand's Key Lutheran Church. Uh, the first year uh, that they came, I had COVID and I missed it. And then last year they came and I was on vacation with my mom. Uh, and so this year, if I didn't show up, I think they were going to think I'm a fake person. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my first time hearing them. I'm so excited. Their rehearsal sounded fabulous. You are in for a true treat. Um, as Pastor Ken said, we have an active, vibrant program, music program here at the church, and we enjoy being able to offer these programs to our community and our Sarasota friends. Um, it does not, uh, we need help to, to do that. And I just want to say a quick thank you, if you'll indulge me, to some people who made tonight possible. Uh, first of all, our, our host families who are housing the, uh, the orchestra for tonight. So I want to send a thank you to Ernie and Karen Smith, Jan and Linda Menue, Dennis and Judy Matthews, Bob and Chris Stobal, Fred and Jane Whitlinger, Debbie and Tom Comer. Thank you so much for your help. <laughs> Um, the unsung hero who's probably not listening or paying attention, but uh, th the guys said that we're the church that they're fed the best at. 
And <laughs> the, the reason for that is our very own Christine Ortiz. So a big thanks to Christine for doing all of that. Um, <laughs> also, a huge shout out to Steve Gunderson and Ethan No, who have done miracles keeping these poinsettias alive for three weeks <laughs> and making our sanctuary look so beautiful. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and also to the guys, John and Jimmy Van from Van Presentation Services for uh, doing all of our AV tonight and making sure that people uh, who are not here can see it online. And we thank you for doing that, guys. Okay. <laughs> End of comments. Just a little bit about this program. It is going to be a 75-minute-ish program with no intermission. So start to finish, uh, one shot. If you do need to leave, I just ask you to try to leave by the side exits. I'm not sure if Pastor Ken said it, but there's restrooms right outside here and to your right um, if you need anything. Other than that, I think I'm done. Let me just double check. Yes. Okay. With that said, Again, welcome, and I ask you to help me welcome the King's Brass. Many years ago, a wise musical king wrote these words. He has given me a new song to sing of praise to our God. Many will see the glorious things he has done for me and stand in awe before the Lord and put their trust in him.
Uh, it's great to be back here with you this evening. My name is Tim Zimmerman. I come from the eye of the storm of Hurricane Ian. I come from Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> well, we got beat up a little bit, stayed with neighbors for four months, but we're back in our home, and just this week, we got a kitchen. <laughs> well, this is the 45th anniversary of the King's Brass, and over those years, we've taken hymn tunes and done them in a little different way, like this next one that says, All Creatures of Our God and King. Thank you. 
Well, we're glad for some of the kids who've joined us here this evening. We want to do something for the kids because we're glad they came. We want to do a story that starts out on a farm and kind of painting the backdrop for our story is the keyboard is a percussionist right over here on your right. And on the farm was a farmer and his name was Jesse. And he's represented by the guy right over here at the keyboard. Percussion from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Please welcome the doctor himself, Dr. Colton Morris. Hi, my name is Dr. Song Hwan Kim from Amarillo, Texas. I'm a proud Korean cowboy. <laughs> Jesse had three sons who were represented by the three trombones, the tenor and the low bass trombone. Their names were Eliab, Abinadab, and Shama. They were very tight and they always stuck together. My name is Kyle Davidson, and I'm coming to y'all from Cleveland, Tennessee, where we like just a little bit of tea in our glass of sugar. Hi, my name is Christian Marple. I live in Fairfax, Virginia. And since many presidents have been born on Virginia soil, you could call it a Prez Dispenser. My name is Jonah Trout. I come from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we have ketchup. Well, there was an evil people from a city called Gath. They were called the Philistines, and they were not very nice at all. And they're represented by the loud, most obnoxious trumpet. My name is Dr. Tony Sanders, and I come from Minnesota. People often ask me, is it cold there? But I always tell them, yes. Well, the Philistines had a championship warrior named Goliath, who's represented by the biggest, baddest instrument in our ensemble. He was the biggest bully, the loudest yeller, and the man with the worst breath. Hello, my name is Jacob Fulkerson, and I live in Dallas, Texas, where everything is bigger, including this trumpet. Well, Jesse's youngest son was named David, who was a harp and piccolo trumpet player. He was a part-time musician in the court of the king, but had a day job as a shepherd. Hello, my name is Joey Schnevelin, and I come to you all from Iowa, where our food pyramid consists of the three B's, beef, bacon, and corn. Well, kids, I think we have all the members of our story. We have the farmer, the brothers, the Philistines, David and Goliath, and I think we're ready to play the story using the Sunday school song, Only a Boy Named David.
These next set of pieces are typically American. And since the members of King's Brass have done marching band for many years, we thought we'd play a march from Civil War days. This piece is written by Patrick Gilmore for his sister's fiance as he returns from battle. So we'll all shout hooray when Johnny comes marching home.
If you like that one, you're definitely going to like to listen to it on our new CD. <laughs> but you're probably wondering why we play all these instruments. And the answer is quite simple. You haven't heard us sing. <laughs> so we would like you to join us in singing him, All Hail the Power. The words will be printed in your programs or projected on the screens behind me. Printed in your programs. And the brass and organ will play an introduction fanfare. So simply watch us for the cue and join us in singing All Hail the Power.
For the 100th anniversary celebration of our nation, there are a group of pastors and musicians up in New England that decided that we as a nation needed a national hymn. And they came together and wrote the hymn, God of Our Fathers. And my favorite stanza is the second stanza that says, Refresh thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to never-ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine. And glory, Lord, and praise be ever thine.
He sat at his desk, waiting. He waited, even though there were letters to sign, emails to read, press conferences to prepare for, briefings with the cabinet to attend, and tea for an ambassador in the Rose Garden. Looking up from his schedule, though, he smiled. Yes, there was a lot to do. But first, some people were coming. Some very important people. At least he thought they were important. That was why they, he kept inviting them to come to the White House to talk with him. He longed to hear what was in their hearts, in their minds, to talk about how they felt, what they needed, and how they could help him accomplish his goals. Mr. President. Yes. <laughs> They're here, sir. Oh, wonderful. Send them on in. Oh, thou chief executive who art in the White House. O thou in whom so much doth constitutionally dwell, upon whose desk hath been placed a most effective blotter, incline thine ear toward thy most humble citizen, and grant that thy many entities may be manifoldly endowed upon the fruitful plain. And may thy thou dost hearkeneth, what thee didst shalt... Excuse me, sir, but I don't think you even know what you just said. Goodbye. Next. Yo, 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 what's good, Mr. President? 
Yo, look at this place. It is sick. Really digging the positive vibes. I'm so glad we could have this little conversation. But you know, my friends and I have a saying, and it goes like this. You don't bother me. I don't bother you. <laughs> Selfie. See ya. Uh, next. Mr. President, I need a parking space downtown this afternoon. And not a parallel one, one I can pull right into nice and easy. And nothing with a meter, I'm not paying for any ticket. I'm sure you'll do this for me. This is very, very important. Now, speaking of important, have you heard my plan to help feed the hungry? You were the centerpiece of my puzzle to solve world hunger. I'll tell you what. And another thing, I've lost my favorite golf club, a putter. This one, to be exact. Can't remember where I've put it, and I've got a big game this weekend and desperately need it. I'm sure you'll find it for me. Goodbye. Next. Dear President, I know I should talk to you when I'm more awake, but I've got so many things to do, and now... I'm so sleepy. Colton, will you please show this young man out? Now, is there anybody else who'd like to see me tonight? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but it looks like, as usual, most of the people we invited, well, they all said they were too busy to come tonight. They had to go uh, walk the dog, do some dishes, mow the yard, go to Kilwins. So you're saying there's nobody else who'd like to come see me? Well, we've got one left on the list, sir, but honestly, I don't think you would want to talk with him. Now, why would that be? Well, because, Mr. President, he's uh, just a child. Well, that's okay with me. Send the boy in. Very well, sir. Are, 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 are you really the, the president? Why, yes. Yes, I am. Wow! <laughs> well, don't you have something to say? Something to recite? Something to ask for? Yes, yes, I do. Well, go on. Okay, thank you for inviting me, that's all. The president couldn't seem to say anything for a while. All he could do was smile. Then they talked and talked for the longest, most wonderful time. stand and join with us in singing when peace like a river attendeth my way.
Corey Tembum was a Dutch watchmaker from the city of Harlem in the Netherlands. During World War II, as a result of her Christian faith, she hid Jews in her home, hiding them from the invading Nazi army. Well, she was eventually arrested and sent to the Ravensbrück concentration camp in Germany. You can read her story in her book, The Hiding Place, in the movie by the same title. But this is what Corey Timboom has to say about prayer. She says, the wonderful thing about prayer is you leave a world in which you can't do something and you enter God's realm where everything is possible. God created man in his own image and wants to have a relationship with him. But man rebelled against God and a great gap was placed between God and man. But God had a solution. The solution was himself. He came down in the form of the God-man, Jesus Christ, paid the great price for our sins on the cross, a price that we couldn't pay on our own, was buried, rose again the third day to ever conquer sin and death once and for all. And now he promises that all who come to him in faith, he will make their hearts clean. He will adopt them into his family and make them sons of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But as many as received him, to them give you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. When David faced Goliath, he was probably 15 years old and undersized. And he was facing Goliath, who was over nine feet tall. His armor alone weighed 120 pounds. But David had spent time with God. He knew God's power. Listen to what he says in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Surely goodness and mercy will chase after me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So when David saw Goliath, oh, he saw the problem in front of him, but he saw beyond the problem and saw the power of God. The Israelites looked at David and Goliath and said, David's going to get killed. David looked at Goliath and thought, my goodness gracious, this guy is huge. I can't miss And he went from fear to faith and won a great victory. When Hurricane Ian hit Fort Myers, Psalm 46 was often quoted. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Be still and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
join us on this new hymn, He Will Hold Me Fast. I'd like to close this evening with a hymn that's taken from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. It says, Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, lead us to the light of day.
Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. We appreciate each of you who have come here this evening. Always a pleasure to be here in uh, St. Arban's Key where the weather is always perfect. <laughs> and uh, we want to say a big thank you to Pastor, to Michael, and all the people who made it possible for us to be here. Always a pleasure to be a part of the ministry here. And we think that whoever designed this sanctuary must have been a brass player. Because it's very brass friendly in here. And we, we do have some recordings in the back uh, for the uh, 45th anniversary. We have a new CD called The Festive Brass. Many of the things we played here this evening are on that new CD. And we have King's Brass on flash drives. Did you think that would ever happen? You know, people have told us we have new cars, no CD players. Well, we put five CDs on a flash drive. You just plug them in that USB port in your car and voila, you have King's Brass music. And we're doing one other thing here for the 45th anniversary of the King's Brass in March. March 10th through the 17th, we're doing a King's Brass cruise out of, the Carib down in the, out of Fort Lauderdale, down the Caribbean uh, for seven days. If you play a brass instrument, bring your horn. Come play with the King's Brass. Because the bottom line is, you can never have enough brass players. <laughs> so there's information on the CD table in the back. Well, uh, let me see, how many of you at one time or another have ever played a band instrument? Let me see your hands. Yeah, you should all brought your instruments. We could have a party. Well, if you've been a band member, you've played this next composer. He wrote hundreds of marches, but one of his marches has been voted in as the official march of the United States of America. So here's the King's Brass unauthorized version of John Philip Sousa's The Stars and Stripes Forever.
what you all think. So when we started this program, I asked if you raised your hand if you've heard them before. For those of you who did not, who wants to hear them again? <laughs> hey, thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, I want to give, I can't see, but I'm hoping she's back there. I want to give one big special thank you to somebody that this couldn't have happened uh, without. She really helped with all the details and was my, was my right-hand helper for all of this. We're so grateful for everything she does. She's getting married this weekend. Um, big thank you to Nina Venucci. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> um, as Pastor Ken said, I'm going to steal his thunder a little bit. This is our last opportunity to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Blessed Epiphany, buy some CDs, contribute if you can, get home safe. Thank you so much. <laughs>